So in my house, I have quite a few different Windows machines, Macs, and Linux machines. And in some cases, uh, I want to share files between these different computers. And also, it can be a real pain to go around trying to set up Time Machine on each of the different types of devices and taking, say, a SSD drive around with a cable and backing up each machine once a week after it starts to complain to you that you haven't backed up in a while. So what we're going to cover today is actually how to set up a central network attached storage system powered by a Raspberry Pi 4, which has the USB 3 plugs for a high speed connection to a couple SATA disks, SATA SSD in this case, but you could use uh, with these little um, connectors, uh, you can actually use full size drives as well. Now, um, this is going to be a little combination of, of course, software and then inexpensive, low power hardware. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first choice, the Raspberry Pi 4. You don't need to get the four gig or eight gigabyte model in this case. You could go for the two and be just fine with the software they're gonna be running. Software that you're gonna install onto this Raspberry Pi is called OMV or Open Media Vault. And it is a, as it implies with the name, a open source software solution that enables you to set up a network attached storage server very easily. Now, um, with the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, I've looked at it and while it's running, memory usage maybe around 500 megabytes tops while Open Media Vault is running. Now, you could also start to use this little machine for other things, right? You could actually use uh, VNC to log in and use it like a second desktop if you needed or run code on it on a regular basis. You could do other things with these Raspberry Pi 4 servers without really bogging them down. So, you know, consider if you want to use it for additional things like in a prior video, a Pi hole that I set up, uh, you could do all of that on one of these Raspberry Pi machines and maybe bump it up to the four gigabyte model. But Overall, I've found that uh, you, you really have to do a lot to need the four gigabyte model and eight, um, maybe if there's some memory intensive application that you're running, but haven't run into that problem at all in my house. All right, so next up with Open Media Vault and then the Raspberry Pi setup, you're gonna need some sort of an external uh, SSD or SATA drive uh, connector here. And in this case, it uses USB 3 to connect right into the USB 3 on the back of the Raspberry Pi. So fairly straightforward there. I would also recommend, if you can, gigabyte ethernet uh, connected to a, um, potentially directly into your router for the house. It depends on if you're trying to do Wi-Fi or wired connection. Uh, I'll leave that one up to you, but I use gigabyte networking in my house with wired connections, as well as a uh, Netgear Orbi solution, which is about as close as you can get to gigabyte Wi-Fi, but realistically, um, it's great, but you're not gonna achieve gigabyte yet over, over the air. Um, still, really good solution for quick backups. I never even notice that they're running, uh, and then you have them for all the machines in the house. So you're gonna need uh, the network cords, of course. You're gonna need your little Raspberry Pi. You're gonna need some sort of device that can fit multiple different uh, SSD drives. And then of course, you know, I do show here this is a, uh, a sort of short SATA to USB cable. I've had hit and miss luck with this with a Raspberry Pi. And I think it's because it doesn't have a dedicated power delivery. It's expecting the Raspberry Pi to deliver all the power through this cord. And the speed drops substantially when I use this particular cord. Now, I've ordered a couple extras that say that they have you know, newer updated standards, yada, yada, yada. I'll test those at a later time. For now though, these little docks that you can get where you put multiple drives in has its own power cord. You plug into the wall and it just works. All right, cool. So let's actually get to installing OMV onto a Raspberry Pi and uh, get it all configured. All the hardware you're gonna need to get started. You're gonna need the micro SD card that you can put into the SD card reader and place that into your computer. This is so you can get Raspberry Pi OS onto the micro SD card. Once you have that ready to rock, you're gonna to need to put this in your Raspberry Pi. I used a FLIRC case, is the way that I'm gonna call it. And in this case, um, 
I am showing a Raspberry Pi 3 here, but the end solution is going to be a Raspberry Pi 4. The same case for both the Pi 3 and Pi 4. I love it because it acts like a big heat sink. It actually touches the CPU inside the machine and keeps it cool while it runs. Then we're going to need some sort of a SATA SSD. I like SATA SSDs because they just use a little bit less power overall uh, than a spinning mechanical disk. Uh, and the prices come down quite a bit. This, yeah, don't worry about this particular brand. It is basically just the cheapest I could find. I'm going to do a test on cheap SSDs and figure this would be one way to go ahead and test them out. And then you're going to need a docking solution. So look for one that supports USB 3. And in this case, uh, Rico is the one that I have. I don't even know if they still sell this one, but they all seem to be pretty much the same. I bought a couple in the past and they all just seem to work really well. Uh, you can also do some pretty easy cloning of drives with these sort of fun uh, docks here, um, which may come up useful in the future uh, if you need it. But there you go. Quick review of all the hardware you're going to need before you get started. Now let's go ahead and actually put it all together. Okay, so now go ahead and put your SD card into the machine. Once you have it in there, hopefully you've already downloaded the Lena Etcher. I use this thing way too often to create bootable disks. Uh, I also have already downloaded the Raspberry Pi OS, and I've got the full as well as light. Now you can use just light if uh, you know if you want to just have a smaller uh, micro SD card. This one is great, but there's no UI. If you want to have a UI where you can actually go and say, log into the machine or plug it into an HDMI um, monitor and actually see the operating system and work with the UI itself, um, use full. So depending on which route you decide to go, it doesn't matter. You can still set up a network uh, attached storage. I'm gonna go ahead and use full so that I can show a little bit of the UI and also well, selfishly use it in the future for other tasks as well. So now I need to go ahead and uh, choose that one. So I'm going to go ahead and select from my operating systems here and choose full and tell it to flash. Once that's done, I'm going to actually add two files into the completed flashed SD card. So I'll probably have to eject the SD card, put it back in, and then I'm going to drop just a blank file called SSH. I went through this in my pie hole video as well. Now this uh, WPA supplicant configuration file, um, this one will need to actually have some content in it. Now within this file, you're gonna actually put in for as many different networks as you want. So in the end, it will look something like this. So my Wi-Fi. And the cool thing is, if you actually wanna take your Pi around to multiple different places, you could do this like, uh, you know, I've actually done this before, parents house and password two. Just remember to put in whatever country you're in. And this file, uh, once you place these into the bootable disk, Raspberry Pi will turn on, grab this, configure the Wi-Fi automatically. And this makes it really easy if you don't want to plug a monitor into the machine and just configure it from your Mac, which is primarily what I'll be doing here. So we're going to use this route. Okay, the flash is complete. So like I said, final step, eject. Put the card back into the computer. There we go. Popped up on the desktop. I'm going to drag over my two files. And we're off to the races. Now this is only if you need to use Wi-Fi to SSH in, um, but hey, why not? Put the SD card into the Pi. I'm going to go ahead and put it here right next to my saw because that seems like an appropriate place to have it. And I'm just going to plug it in. Now the Pi 4, I'm using the Pi 4 now, it is uh, powered by USB-C. And it takes, you know, anywhere from about three to eight watts. So anything that delivers that much will work. And you can see the light is on, it's starting to load. And now we're gonna go back to my Mac and actually use terminal to uh, go ahead and SSH into this machine. Use SSH pi at raspberry pi dot local. And this is gonna be the default name of that Raspberry Pi, every single install comes that way. If it connected to the Wi-Fi correctly, then my username and this default name for the machine itself should get me access. Okay, yes, I want to accept this because I can see it's within my network. And now the default password is Raspberry. Cool, so we're in. For cleanliness sake, we're gonna to wanna to actually update the Raspberry Pi before we start hacking around too much. 
So let's go ahead and do a sudo, which basically tells the machine you want to run as a super user. Super user do. And we're going to do an apt get update. And then we're going to do an apt get full upgrade, full dash upgrade. Okay, sudo apt get full upgrade. All right, now we can go ahead and reboot and continue on. All right, now luckily, a user out there has created, as part of the Open Media Vault plugin developers, an install script. Makes it so much easier than having to do all of this work. <laughs> so what I did was I download this script and run it all within one bash command. Um, this uh, command, I'll, I'll put it in the comments and link to it. It's in all the different install instructions that are out there. I just wanted to shortcut to this process. Uh, but what I did was created a little link to that here. And this is going to run the OMV install script that will automate the entire process for us, which is amazing. And at the end of this, it's gonna automatically restart the machine. And this might take 30 to 40 minutes. So yeah, it takes a while. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and pause the recording and come back to it once it's completed. And I'll give you an idea of how long it took. So overall time frame took about, actually it feels like it was much faster this time because I did it before, uh, maybe 20 minutes tops, right? But make sure that you can log back in before um, you know, moving on in this process. Type in ifconfig, one word, and snag your IP address. You're gonna take that IP address and put it into your web browser. And what this is gonna do is inside your network allow you to connect to your Raspberry Pi and its web console for configuration. The default username and password is gonna be admin for the username, and the password is Open Media Vault, all lowercase, one word. And you're in. Okay, go ahead and plug in the drives now. Okay, quick warning here before we get into configuring Open Media Vault. There's a lot of click an option, name it, save it, and apply that save. Um, now, that's just the way the Open Media Vault works, but it is a lot of little options. We'll go through it quickly. If you need more time, just pause on your side uh, and, and apply it. First step, set it to 30 minute timeout, then jump in, change your password. You wanna change your default password. All right, now jump over into file systems. And you're gonna create a new file system. Select the disk that you have. In this case, it's my 120 SSD. Label it. Go ahead and save that. This will format the drive. Once it's complete, go ahead and mount the disk. Once the disk is mounted, you'll be able to go in and actually create a shared folder. So go over to SMBCIFS create a share, and within this option, you can actually create a shared folder. So hit the plus, name it, I'm gonna name mine backup folder. Select the device. So once again, 120 gig hard drive. Save that out. And set this share to enable Time Machine support. Save, apply. Awesome. So now your shared folder is configured and ready, but it's not yet actually enabled. Let's go ahead and turn on SMB and apply that as well. At this stage, the folder should actually show up within your network after a little bit. But we're gonna go one more step, create a user that's dedicated to being able to access this share. My user, and I think I used a sweet password of test. Of course, there's other options here of actually creating multiple different users, quotas, etc. We're not going to dive into the details here. This is just getting it simply set up. All right. So we should be good to go. Apply all the changes again. You have to do that a lot. It takes 10 seconds each time too. <laughs> but now that everything's all set up and configured, we can actually jump over onto the Mac and jump into Time Machine. 
Time Machine's fairly straightforward. Go up to the System Preferences. You know, either search for Time Machine or click the icon. Choose your backup disk and boom, there it is. There's backup folder showing up within the network and I'm gonna go ahead and select to use that disk. You should also be able to see this folder within your finder underneath the network and you can connect just like I'm doing here. Select registered user and enter in the credentials of the user that you created to access that shared folder or time machine in this case. And there we are, a nice centralized time machine server. All right, performance, pretty solid. Now this is through a gigabit uh, router. So uh, two machines basically connected directly, gigabit performance. Now, uh, theoretical top limit for gigabit is 125 megabytes. So this chart is shown in megabytes and I was seeing about 50 on the download and then around 80 uh, on the upload. Now, of course, there's fluctuations up and down. Upload was actually more steady, which leads me to believe that the Pi 4 is actually running better than my computer. And uh, the funny story here is that this is actually my second uh, run because the first test I did, it was much lower results. And uh, I was running on my 2011, 27 inch iMac. And apparently the SSD is failing in that one. Um, as you can see here, when I ran Blackmagic speed test, the internal SSD on that machine is getting 32 megabytes per second right, which is garbage. So uh, there's something definitely falling apart there. I'm gonna have to tear that apart and figure it out. Uh, long story short, the Pi 4 was performing really well. And I've even heard that there's some uh, tweaks you can do to make it run even faster. So I'm gonna look into that next, but it's doing great. Okay, conclusion time. Open Media Vault running on a Raspberry Pi 4 is a very powerful and easy to get set up solution for network attached storage as well as time machine. And it's gonna provide you with a solution for all of the different devices within your house. And this includes any operating system. So it's a really cool way to share files between them as well as simplify your backup process, especially with Time Machine and Windows as well, Linux, they all have their own way of backing up and this is gonna make it much easier to do. There's some really cool advanced features and functionality within Open Media Vault to actually set up, of course, different users for different devices, but also quotas. So you can, you can essentially take this one disk, split it into a quota so that Time Machine will only take up that much room for each one of your devices as well, rather than hitting the cap and then starting to scale back from there. So it's really cool, really flexible, a lot of advanced functionality in there. The only cautionary piece I'd say is that don't go removing the hardware from the Open Media Vault uh, server once you have it up and running. Use the software to basically remove the folder and unmount the drive, similar in the process of how we actually mounted it within the software before you remove the disk. You can get in some weird inconsistency if that disk completely disappears. Like you can unattach it and then five minutes later, reattach it and it'll work just fine. But if you unattach it and start playing around with it and never reattach it or attach it oh, formatted differently, you're gonna run into problems. So it's the only cautionary tale here. Um, overall though, fun little project. Hope you liked it. Let me know if you have any questions on other more advanced functionality. I'm not gonna be the expert, but I've broken plenty of these. So I do have experience here. Um, that's pretty much it. Subscribe if you liked the video, like it if you liked it, and all that other fun stuff. Have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.